What's up everybody, Tech King Like, welcome back with another video for you guys today. As you can see my partner in crime back there hanging out with me. Today we're going to talk about the Galaxy S22 Ultra and this is going to be my roughly two to three week review of the phone after using it for the last two to three weeks. Now, full disclosure, I do still have an S22 Plus. There is a SIM card currently in this device. I am actively kind of using it as a side device because I really wanted to get a feel for both of the devices but we'll talk about this one in another video. Today, we are going to focus solely on the S22 Ultra. Now, obviously, what is there to say about this phone? It is the new Note. We know this, but we have to remember that naming does not define the device. The Note legacy was defined by the S Pen, which we now have with this phone. So there really is no need to continue to call it a Note if we're gonna go along the way that Samsung is doing it, which I'm kind of a fan of. Let's talk about why Calling it the Ultra is better than calling it a Note. Number one, the S20 Ultra or the S21 or S Ultra line since its inception with the S20 was always the phone that was like the cutting, bleeding edge of Samsung's mobile tech. Then when the Note would follow the following, you know, later on that year, six or seven months later, it would kind of be the same phone, just boxier like this one and maybe with the S Pen and a few other features. But that was it. It wasn't really much to separate it. Now, Taking this phone out of its case that it's currently in, as you can see, yeah, this has the same characteristics of the Ultra, but I like it. I like the squared off design. I like the way that it looks. It's opening the door for people who have never experienced a Note device to truly feel and know what it's like to have an S Pen to get this premium design in this feel. So I'm not really one of those people that's going to make the joke and constantly call this thing a Note because it's not. It's an Ultra. It's the S22 Ultra. That's what it is. Now, another thing about this phone that I have really enjoyed so far in my experience with using it has been the battery. Battery on this phone has been incredible. Now, Samsung has a long way to go before they can even compete in my mind with the likes of, say, uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max or something like that. Even, you know, other devices that make their own chips in-house and do things as far as hardware, software, all of that. Not to say that they can't do it, but it's just it's really hard to beat what Apple's done with the 13 Pro Max. But full disclaimer, that is because the 13 Pro Max doesn't do nearly half of what the Ultra does. Now, of course, you do get cameras and you do get other things that iOS does, but let's just let's just let's call a spade a spade. It's nowhere near as complicated or as complex as people make it out to be. They're two completely different devices with completely different OSs. One is more of a casual phone, one is more of a productivity powerhouse. You guys know which one is which. So battery on this phone for everything considered and what it does has been really good. I have been able to average at least six or seven hours of screen on time with my device and my usage. I can literally take my phone off the charger at say six o'clock in the morning. And by the time I get home from errands throughout the day or work or anything like that, my phone will usually still be sitting around 30 to 40%. And all I do pretty much throughout the day is just listen to music. I stream, I look at a couple YouTube videos here and there. I mostly listen to them more than I watch them. Um, phone calls, texting, you know, throughout the day, obviously the, the, the normal communication stuff that you do with the phone since it still is a phone. And <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know, I do record a couple pictures and, you know, take, uh, take pictures and record video here and there, but that's about it. The phone battery is really good. I mean, all things considered, it's better than the S21 Ultra, in my opinion. There are some people out there who will look at videos and tell you that it's not. Hey, man, I go off of real world experience. I don't let a video define how I treat a phone. And in my real world experience, battery has been really good. Another feature of the phone that I have really enjoyed has been the cameras. Now, I am really filming these cameras on the phone, mainly because while we can have a whole separate video about Samsung shutter lag, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to talk about how I use burst mode to mitigate that if I'm trying to capture a photo of a moving subject or something like that, or of my daughter. I'm going to talk about how I would prefer to just pull out the phone and record a 4K video clip. I mean, the video on this thing is incredible. Now, if you guys want to see something like that, like a video test or anything on the channel, please let me know because... I mean, the video is great. It's definitely iPhone level, in my opinion. I mean, I know people will say it's close to it. To me, to my eyes, I don't see any difference between it and the iPhone. Samsung has finally hit that mark where their camera has caught up to the competition. Now, when it comes to still photography, is it Pixel? No. No. Is it as consistent as the iPhone? No. But if you are able to look past that, which most people are in the real world, it is a damn good camera. 
colors that I get out of this phone, the overall saturation, the overall dynamic range, everything that comes out of this phone when I take a picture looks incredible to me. Even indoor photos have looked good. Now, if you want to see some samples, uh, go follow me on my Instagram at Tech King Mike, and also just follow me on Twitter. I do post videos and pictures over there every now and then of what I do with the phone, but I more so don't really focus on camera comparisons and things. I just speak from what I see, and I really enjoy the cameras that I'm getting out of this phone. Now, it's not all good. There are a few things about the phone that I dislike. One of them being the haptic motor. Now, I know, I know, that might not seem like something that most people would be complaining about, but to me, it's something that I'm frustrated about. Where I sit right now as I'm recording this video, I have a monitor that's about this far in front of me, right? And I literally had a day where I was looking at my monitor and I'm doing some work on the, on the computer and my wife called me three times in a row. I didn't even feel or hear the phone vibrating on my desk and it was sitting on the desk pad, not even a foot away from me. It wasn't until I looked down that I saw, oh, I'm getting a phone call. But with my iPhone or even with this device, when someone calls and someone texts or a notification comes through, I get that instantly. I've almost had to remind myself when I use the S22 Ultra to keep this thing on because if I don't, I may miss something because of how quiet and how soft the vibration motor is on this thing. So that is definitely a con of the device that I'm not really a fan of. Another one that I would have to say, if I had to really nitpick something that I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of the S Pen placement. Yes, I know. It might seem like it's very, very nitpicky at this point, but I'm used to the S Pen placement being on this side, kind of just how it used to be in the past. And I'm not really too keen on the fact that I'm, I'm instinctively reaching for this end of the phone, but I have to go over here. Now, I am a right-handed individual, so usually when I'm taking notes, I'm doing like this. So my hand goes to the right, and it's just kind of a muscle memory thing. I feel like Samsung is really going to get it right at some point. I mean, if you think about it, I think a lot of it may have to do with the fact that the volume buttons are on this side, which is why they can't do it like that. But I don't know. They did have the debacle with the Note 10, and I call it a debacle because a lot of people were frustrated about it, where we had the Note 10 Plus, you know, had it the way it was, and then we switched over and it was different. So, you know, it is what it is, but I am I can move past it. Other than that, in the last two weeks, I haven't really had anything that has pulled me away from this phone. Now, like I said, there is a SIM card currently in all three of these devices. Now, don't ask me about my cell phone bill. It is what it is. But this device here in particular, now I got this from Samsung and this thing was, tra I traded in a Note 20 Ultra and I traded in a Note 8 in order to get this phone. Now, a lot of people will tell you that the Note 20 Ultra trade in for it was just not that smart. I disagree. I think the Note 20 Ultra is a great phone, and I think that if you have one and you want to upgrade, do it. This is why. You have a phone that is two years old that does not have an easily replaceable battery unless you take it to a shop to get it fixed. You're replacing that phone with one that has newer processor with the new architecture, better battery optimization, a better screen in my opinion is a little bit brighter and it's just a little bit sharper. 120 hertz and the adaptive refresh rate on this device is so much better than it was on the Note 20 Ultra from someone who's had one and who has used one actively. Also, the overall cameras are better and I just really feel like it's just a better device overall when it comes to what you're getting. Now, if you just got a Note 20 Ultra, obviously don't upgrade. But if you're coming from one and you have one since 2020, dude, go on and get one, man. You're not going to go wrong by getting this phone. My wife has a Note 20 Ultra and she was perfectly comfortable moving away from it, which is why we got this one here. Now, it's, it's, it's your choice what you choose to do with it, but if I'm telling someone what they should do or if someone's asking me what should they do, I'm going to tell you, man, go for it, man. Why not? Like You're not going to miss anything. And you're not going to lose anything. I say go for it and be happy, but that's just really and truly just some thoughts that I have. I just wanted to talk to you guys about my thoughts on this phone. I haven't taken my SIM card out of this. Full disclosure, it came from this one. So my SIM card came from the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I have not taken it out of this one since I got it. And the reason for that being is that yes, I love Apple products. I have a MacBook Pro, I have an Apple Watch, I have an iPhone, AirPods Pro, I have everything that goes along with the Apple ecosystem. And I'm perfectly content with holding on to this phone. I don't know how the flash turned on, but let's cut that off. <laughs> I don't know, like, I can't, I can't say that I'm gonna get rid of this phone because I'm not. This thing will stay as a secondary phone in my pocket. May not always leave the house with me, but it will stay as a secondary phone. That's because I use this thing for content. Some of the case videos you've seen on the channel were recorded with this phone. And it's just easier to hold on to it than to try to just do the whole I'm switching thing completely. But 
as far as where my main sim is concerned and as far as where I communicate actively with my family, my friends, my child's daycare, my wife, anything involving my job, anything of that nature, it is all being done from this device right here. And I can tell you right now, it ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So Galaxy S22 Ultra, this is the Phantom Black, the one tizzy, one terabyte edition. I'm glad I got mine because you can't get them no more. <laughs> but this is, yeah, two weeks in with this thing. I'm loving it. I can easily see myself continuing to use this phone throughout the rest of the year. And um, yeah, that's it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're thinking about picking one up, highly encourage you to just go check it out. Go to Best Buy, your local carrier store, wherever. Hey, man. It's a great phone. You won't go wrong with it. I'm curious and looking forward to seeing how this thing holds up after a full month of usage. So stay tuned for that video coming to the channel. But if you guys like this video, comment down below. Let me know what you think about the S22 Ultra or even the S22 Plus. And stay tuned for a video on this one because, like I said, they have both been in active rotation. And we will talk about it in the next one. I'll catch you guys later. It's your boy Tech King Mike. I'm out.